Yes, Hoopla World TV. Today is Tuesday, the 8th of March 2022. And my guest here is uh, Miles. Yes. Uh, Miles, you are welcome. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, um, I think I would rather have you introduce myself. Introduce yourself to yeah, people no uh, so that we can meet you. Thank you. So, so my name is Miles Asika Meche. Uh, son of the Izzy of Umulei, the current Izzy of Umulei, John Meche, and grandson of previous Izzy of Umulei, John Meche, again. Um, as some of you might know me, maybe when I was a kid, I was a small boy running around the compound beside my dad. Uh, <laughs> for the most part, uh, I grew up in Lagos and Lakey, so I was back into the village once in a while when I was younger. So obviously the memories are a little hazy for me, but some faces are still the same from growing up, seeing them back in Lagos, seeing them when I came back. Um, currently I do reside in Canada. I've been there for the last 20 years. Um, I know it's been a long time since I came back. Sad, but so far now I'm back and I'm excited to be back. I'm happy to be back. I didn't expect a lot of people when you go back to like Canada or the States, a lot of people tell you the village is the village, but coming back, I don't know. The village is like a little getaway paradise for me. It's been really nice getting away. Um, I have taken the trips like to Jamaica and places to get away. But coming back to the village, there's just something homely about it. Meeting, seeing the people, seeing my brothers, seeing all the youths, my brothers and sisters in the village. Everyone's like so nice and how far they've gone. Um, I, one thing I do admire about the people from Umulari is their drive. Everyone is doing something. Everyone's a big boy here. From the presidents to the big ladies who are like owning their own businesses, owning their own hostels. That for me is like very inspirational. I still think um, for the most part, a lot of people should come back because there's so much more that we can do. There's so much more we can give back. There is a lot of growth. Uh, they just don't have the resources. That's why coming back this time has opened my eyes that I need to come back more often and I need to come back with a lot more people from my village just to be able to bring them back to see like how much growth this village has and like the opportunities it still has. I'm still personally amazed about even the airport down the road. Like we have our own airport five minutes away. You can just fly in to Abuja, to Lagos, to Potakot, wherever you want. And I believe like in, oh, today officially it is, they will be flying internationally as well. So like, small little village that you guys thought Umulia was is not small anymore. I think um, there are great people in this community who have been doing a lot of great things that we haven't been taking, that we haven't heard of in a while. Um, that taking, like, taking praise for all the excellence that goes on, like, that our grandfathers used to preach back in the day, how everyone used to be lawyers and doctors. Now that they're just businessmen, there's tailors out here who create, like sew the craziest fits uh, for the most part. Um, you do have people who are like giving back to like the churches, the schools, even like just simple things like putting lights in the markets just so you can help other businesses. Those those little things are things that I think we've forgotten about once we leave because like it takes a community to raise a child and but once the child grows up like does the child remember his own community that's one of the biggest problems that I think we face as like the new generation we've gone away and we forget that like our grandparents our parents they did a lot for us and now it's time for us to come back and be able to give as well <laughs> Thank you, Maes, for that uh, impression. It's, it's really refreshing, <laughs> you know, seeing Umweri through your eyes, yeah. you know, and uh, things. I bet there is something that um, 
was new on me. Okay. Uh, but thank you know, because I always assume seeing you like this. I never thought you were born around here. I thought actually uh, this was your first time uh, around here. Uh, so you're actually saying that you you grew up, you were born here, you grew up here. Yes. Uh, so I was born in Canada, but I grew up here mm. for a couple of years mm. before moving back. Uh, moving to Ghana, Taiwan, and then to Canada eventually, mm -hmm. where I settled. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, a lot of people don't think I'm from here. They always think I'm an Uibo contractor <laughs> just here in town, uh, which I'm used to. You remember our first meeting? Uh, I know now. <laughs> you looked at me like, I was like, I'm his son. And you looked at me like, so like, what do you do here? I was like, no, I'm back home. I'm just here yeah, to yeah. hang out. Mm -hmm. But so, no, I... I do get that impression quite often. Mm. Uh, I think that's the impression a lot of people give when you're half caste and you don't speak Igbo for the most part. Uh, but once you start speaking pigeon for them, everyone don't forget. They're like, ah, this they boy. They forget the differences. Uh, yeah. So they honestly forget the differences. Mm. Um, my favorite is still like a lot of people are always like, do you chop? Do you chop eba? Like yeah. me, I don't make my okra soup at home. <laughs> So it's it's just really it's 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 a harmless like little eye opener that mm. some people have. Mm. It's just like oh okay oh he's from a from here. Mm. He's one of our own brothers <laughs> from like down the road. Uh, so, on. so you find they accept you easily. They relate to you easily. once they discover that you are not just yeah. there. Yeah, I feel like once they discover I'm not just like a regular outsider or like yes. a foreigner to them yes. they're just like oh okay come eat with us like let's go here let's go there uh, everyone for the most part mm -hmm. generous super generous mm -hmm. sometimes i'm just i'm just i'm just too full from all their generosity everyone's like chop 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 <laughs> ah, I'm a little fool. so i go back go my wait yes. uh, so now you you talked about uh, growing up for a while here mm -hmm. and things and i begin to wonder what was it like in those days? What was it like growing up here? Yes, yes. What did you get into? What fun did you catch? What games did you play? What did you do? We played a lot of lotto. What's that game? The one that you collect house. What you, uh, uh, the one you, you drop your rocks yes. and then you collect and then every you, four. You collect. Okay, okay, okay. You drop four and you distribute that. Like that's still a game we still play even back in Canada. We yeah. have our own set mm. whenever our friends get together. Mm. Um, I think for me the fun part was just being outside. Even helping my grandmother sell pure water once in a while, carrying bags of pure water. You, like, you did that? Ah, yeah, no. <laughs> a lot of people forget. They yeah. think me, I'm just another one. <laughs> um, just little fun things. Even just going around, checking up on the neighbors or even stores. Mm -hmm. All the aunties and uncles around the corner. Just making sure they're okay. Mm -hmm. I think those were like the fun parts. Just saying hi, greeting. Mm -hmm. You forget how like, coming from Canada, you forget how nice it is just to hear someone say good morning to you just like literally just nicely not knowing you and just say good morning good, morning. Like, good evening like how are you mm. simple things because like when you're back in canada a lot of people just go by the day it's like yeah. okay just go by them you don't know them just keep in your own zone mm. keep into yourself mm. so i think those were like the fun things for me like even just eating being able to just go to like the beach or going to a nice grill where yeah. uncles and aunties are just like grilling meats having nice drinks just mm. enjoying the music mm. the culture mm. of it mm. those were like those are still fun things for me in those days did you get to swim at uh, at uh, Uchichi stream did you get to swim yeah in the river yeah uh, my father used to hate me swimming there he used to tell me <laughs> Mami Wata will take me away <laughs> all these times, but... Um, <laughs> but they never did. But they never did, so, uh, how, which how, was good. How come? Did you, did you draw up a pack with them? No, did you, no, I was just a good swimmer. How did swimmer. you handle them? I was just a good swimmer. <laughs> I, think I, I think it didn't really cross my mind. I was just like, just make sure I don't get caught by the current. Mm. Uh, for the most part. Uh, yeah, no, none of those old juju yeah, stop. things were the biggest concern they mm. were terrifying as a kid mm. but i think growing up with like different perspectives it was just more 
Okay, mm-hmm. those there's some things you should stay away from, you know? Yeah. Don't practice in those black magic that other people do. Mm-hmm. I think the intention with that is like um, it's just out of jealousy or like greed. But mm-hmm. for the most part, um, my family always taught me always learn to give, always be open minded. So I think that just never really bothered me as much. <laughs> so did you get your fish in the river yeah. apart from swimming? Yeah. Uh, I was good at you catching them, but if you gave me a if you gave me a rod, if you gave me a stick and a string with a hook, uh, yeah. I'd definitely catch one. <laughs> what about riding in the canoes? In the canoes? Did you catch any of that? No, I don't think I did. Mm. I don't think I did. Mm. Like I, they let me pull in a couple of fishing nets. Mm. That's about it. <laughs> so when you when you left yes and uh, you went abroad you traveled yeah abroad traveled and things yeah so how did you feel did you miss the the local life here when you were traveling mm-hmm. here yeah? when i left officially we first left to ghana so okay so it the, was the a little different have been, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't drastic it wasn't drastic it wasn't there drastic. was some different what was the differences uh i think it's just the, the different cultures and like mm-hmm. Uh, the Guineans are they're su- they're super nice, same as Nigeria. But like, when you're Nigerian, you can tell you're Nigerian. There's definitely that pride we carry around, for the most part. There's the swagger we carry around, like always wanting to be the best. Uh, Guineans are a little more relaxed. They're like, ah, you don't have to, you don't have to rush things too much. Whereas like we like to get things done really quick, for the most part. And then I think the drastic change was the move to Canada, where you just miss being close to, like, really close to, like, your own community. Because, like, you just don't have that anymore. It's not like you can just walk out and just say hi. Like, you have those, like, uncles and aunts that you grew up with or those friends that you have, like, around the village to say hi to. And it was just a little harder because, like, our grandparents weren't there as well and we got so close to our grandparents as kids mm. so that was just a difference okay. it was always like a call away and then always trying to the time difference um, that definitely builds a gap between people rather than being there with them and always like having that conversation where you can like run into their arms and like get good advice or mm. sometimes run away from spankings mm. those were yeah <laughs> so com- com- coming back here what you know when you were there what were you thinking of when you uh, you know um coming remember back. this place yes each time you're there what do you want to come back to um, what do you miss that you want to come back to yeah i think for me the biggest thing about coming back was just being back on my like my grandparents land mm-hmm. or like just being back to like my homeland um, just because I had missed both my grandparents funerals mm-hmm. and so it was like there was just a calling a craving that like I need to come back to pay my respect mm-hmm. um, I need to come back to see my dad to check in on him mm-hmm. because like he doesn't like the cold there and traveling for him is more within Africa than coming to um, Canada mm-hmm. so it was just more like coming back feeling like getting reconnected with the motherland like or lands of my ancestors as my dad liked to say or my forefathers um, so I think those were like the biggest thing for me it was like mm-hmm. coming back to feel where I was from mm-hmm. to, to ground myself again and to like take and to be able to help in what way I can to see what place up because like Nigeria is definitely that place of the land of opportunity there's like a lot of there's a lot of opportunity here mm-hmm. there's a lot of things you can do here um, people forget because like when you have those conversations with a lot of foreigners they still think like Nigeria is one of those places where it's like the village you have lions as pets you still live with us <laughs> like you just have to you literally have to shrug and look at them like hey it's mm-hmm. the 21st century like mm-hmm. things have changed like even back then, Nigeria still had like mansions bigger than <laughs> what most people live in. Max, I'll come back to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, uh, so this is uh, Hoopla World TV, and our guest is still uh, Mr. Miles yes. Asika. Yes. Meshe. That's correct. Yeah, so he's been our guest here, and uh, he's 
we've been trying to look back at Umwewe, our community, mm -hmm. through his eyes and, yeah. and, and sense. So we'll come back to you, Aska. And now, several times in the course of our discourse, you keep talking about the land of your ancestors and yeah. things like that. Do you feel that connection to them, to your ancestors, when you come here? Yeah, I definitely do. Can you tell us a little about that, that connection? I think I'm just... I remember this I'm this grateful. poem by one of the poets. He said, "The call of the river, none." <laughs> you uh, know, you feel the call of the Omabala River. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes you just feel that. Like I think for a few years, it was just like a, you need to go home, you need to go back, you need mm. to go back. Like one thing my dad used to say is like, come back and just put your feet on the soil. Like mm. take your shoes off and just put your feet on the soil and just feel reconnected. Mm. So I think. Deep down, there was always that feeling that I need to come back, mm -hmm. and then just relearning, like, or even just finding out some of the basic things, like your family members, your ancestors have done for the community for for a long time. I think that was like one of the biggest things. Um, just coming back, just learning that, like, even my great grandfather built this beautiful church where like people go to and it also has a school connected to it things like that or like the policies that were put in place back in the day that my grandfather helped out or or even the people that like my grandparents or my great grandparents like helped out back in the day and seeing how far the community has grown from what it used to be. Mm. So it definitely is one of those things. <laughs> so it's really a time of refreshing each time you Yeah, it's like always here. refreshing and yeah, it's, it's always like inspiring. Inspiring yeah. for you. Mm. It's always inspiring and refreshing mm. and it just gives you that like motivation, that drive yeah. to want to to definitely do more for your community as well. We'll come back to that. But yeah. uh, I want to pursue uh, another slightly different yeah. angle. Yeah. No, so now you've been talking about, you mentioned one or two things that were by way of stereotypes. You mentioned one or two yeah. stereotypes, oh, misconceptions stereotypes, that people... The which other? Are crazy. Are crazy <laughs> out there. Yes, can we look at some of them that you want to dispel? Um, for the most part, a lot of people think when you tell them you're from like... You're from any country in Africa. In, Africa. in general, mm. in general, if you go anywhere, you tell people you're from a country in Africa, they're like, oh, so are you from like a village? Mm. Do you live in a hut? The monkey swing do, or, yeah, like, or do, around the trees. Yeah, like you play around with monkeys. <laughs> like, it's always like that stupid, like, you're like, are you, is that really what you think? <laughs> um, but going there and then you have to like enlighten them. It's like you just got to educate them because they don't know any better. You mm. can't blame them for not mm. knowing any mm. better. The educational system doesn't teach them. Um, doesn't teach a lot of people. <laughs> a, a breath a breath of opinion, a breath, a breath of, of, opinion. of view. Yes. Yeah, like exactly. Mm. They're like, yeah, sure, we were colonized back in the day. But after that colonization, Nigeria was definitely a powerhouse in, on its own after. Um, we've stood our... Like our currency has stood on par with the dollar for a long time. For a long time. A lot of people didn't know about. Yes. Uh, we definitely bring, we bring a lot of culture to society now. Like our music is definitely up there. Our movies, our food. Like now, the biggest trend on even on YouTube and like social media is like people trying a lot of Nigerian food mm. or like doing a lot of Nigerian dances. Mm. So, like a lot of people forget how influential we actually are. Um, and the fact that like we do like big things like so we have big buildings we have we have skyscrapers we have mansions we, we can drive around in like luxury cars in the environment as well so uh, and we have growing big businesses also and we have big businesses <laughs> we have millionaires billionaires <laughs> if not like mm. a lot of them all around the world um, I feel like for the most part, people forget that like Nigerians, you can in anywhere in the world, you can find a Nigerian out there who's doing really good for themselves. Um, and don't let that stereotype of like the 419 catch you because like they have been those that the news has caught, but that's not who we are. Um, that's not like we take pride in the work we do for the most part. So like that's that's one of those things. It's kind of like. Um, meeting a Jamaican and saying a Jamaican is only a Rasta for, <laughs> just, whereas, because just because just because just because he's Jamaican because yeah, of Bob Marley yeah. so like those are the kind of stereotypes that we're trying to break in our life now um, 
we do a lot of things. You can catch us in any corner of any business in this world. So, yeah. thank you for that. No so, this current uh, trip, how how long have you been around this current trip? This current trip, uh, currently, I'd say I've been around for like three months. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I've been taking my time to see it, to really get in tune with like the different parts of Nigeria that I haven't seen in a long time. Mm. Um, the business opportunities here, for the most part, just because like it is, it is a homeland, and I definitely want to do great things here. Not in just my community, but even just like in Nigeria in the whole. <laughs> So this is still a Hoopla World TV. Today is still Tuesday, the 8th of uh, March, 2022. Okay. And uh, the face you are seeing and the voice you are hearing is uh, those of uh, Mr. Miles Asika H. Yes. Uh, now, uh, Miles, uh, your father was recently elected uh, President General yes. of Umweri. Yes. That, that makes him uh, kind of head of government yeah. in Umweri community. Yeah. Yes. Um, were you part of the campaign? Were you part of the process? In any yeah, way? I was part of it um, for the most part. You were around during the campaign? I was around during the campaigns. Could you share with us your impressions about the campaigns, about the people's uh, uh, attitude towards that election and things? Did you find it violent? Did you find... No. What are impressions of the elections? My impressions of this election was very eye-opening just to see the community come together, like all the vibrant youths, all the youths who see the change in the community. Um, I There were like whispers about like violence from the other side, but for the most part, all that I saw from our side of the campaign was just like a lot of togetherness. Like we had all the elders come, all the youths come, everyone understood there were issues that we needed to tackle together. And the only way we can, that my dad and his whole campaign team brought it um, for the resolve was like, we are one community and we are one people. So like, we should take care of our own issues. Things have changed from back in the day where it was just, let's just say the old PGs would just make the decision for everyone. Whereas like now we do take account for everyone, no matter your age, no matter your sex, um, no matter what part of life you are in, in the village or your occupation, we want to take that into account that like we're here to help. Like we want our community to grow. Like we don't want to be left behind just to be seen as a small village because that's not what we are. We have the youths who have, who have the mental capacity, who have the education, who have the drive to want to better this place. Um, we want to be known and respected that like Umuleri is still a thriving uh, community for the most part and I think it was just beautiful just to see how just to see even just the outcome of people coming out just to support and those who just want to see like the change for the better and I think that was like one of the most beautiful things I could see like I could like be a part of whilst I was down here it was just like people coming together people even making decisions on like wanting to do better um, i think one of the biggest things my dad pushes for his campaign is he wants to be able to empower people to help that's that's the one thing he's uh, even installed in all of us as his kids it's just like if you do have the means you might as well you empower someone you, you push them you like encourage them to be able to do better for themselves because once they do better for themselves they can do better for those around them and that's that's the only thing <laughs> you, you see i'm just gaping at you i'm just <laughs> bold <though. laughs> yes really uh, i'm enjoying this i'm enjoying your yeah. opinions and your views and something now let's uh, uh, look kind of uh, um, mind experiment okay. or something now we know it's your father that was, that was elected to be the pg mm -hmm. uh, you know president general not you but assuming that you had been the one mm -hmm. that got elected mm -hmm. huh? okay what would be your priority what would be my priority yes if you have been the one elected now to be president my priority here would be education oh. health i think security and light 
those for now but at the end of the day i i want to see a growth growth is definitely the biggest thing um i think and once you've taken care of all four of those you can have like a steady growth in your community because like without your kids getting the proper education without them going off and mastering a skill um you're they definitely won't grow. If you don't have the electricity to be able to support that schooling or the electricity to support your hospitals for people's health, like how how can you take care of those around you? Let's say you have a pregnant woman who needs the care, like there's no electricity to be able to provide even just hot water for them. Like how do you expect how do you expect your community to grow in that sense? Like how if you're not washing out for the kids, you're not washing out for the community members. Like, those are, like, simple things, I think, are, that would be, like, my top priority. And even just, like, the food situation, just making sure people get food in that sense. Because I do know there are places where it is harder for people to find food and just to be able to, like, to go get, get by, like, day by day. So, those would be, like, my, my personal major priorities, which I do know those are similar to my dad's in a sense (laughs) just because he is my father and we both have that same mentality that like those are the important priorities Mm. for a place to grow Mm. now you mentioned uh talking about this you you brought in the matter of the youths one or two times and uh, of course you're a youth yourself so um i i'm sure you must have interacted with the youth to some extent since coming back here so what would you say about the youths about the, the young population here what do you think are their challenges and how could they be mm-hmm. ameliorated? I don't see them having challenges. I just see them having multiple opportunities without, and now that like my father is... No, but one, did you hear that? <laughs> now that my father is the PG, and now I see that now they have someone who can, who can push them in their dreams or like those drives that they want, those mm. accomplishments that they've been longing for or like wanting to do just mm. because now you have someone who believes in you who's gonna back you up when you need for the most part um, so those opportunities now are even the doors are even open wider than ever so uh run create your business plans have your ideas like just take a step at what you need to do and what you want to do so like a lot of people tell you there are obstacles in the way but in life there will always be obstacles it's there will always you, be obstacles yeah there will always be obstacles it's just mm. for you to get over them mm. and just keep going yeah. so there isn't like the issue of um they have something blocking their way it's just more now there's more opportunities now mm. you have someone who's done a lot who has access to a lot of people where you can reach out to and they can show you a different and even easier way to get to where you need to get to. Mm. <laughs> That's interesting. Mm. So would you like to summarize a word, a message for the youths? The youths? Something, what would you want to say to them? What do I would because like you know a lot of them are yeah. on now, they are watching this. Yeah. Let me say this. Uh, for the most part, I would say... I, I want to speak directly to them. Directly? Them. I want to speak directly okay. to the youths. Yeah. Um, I would like to challenge the youths of Umuleri to do better, be better, and just just help. Even just a little help here and there to empower someone can go a long way. That's my message to all the youths. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And then to your colleagues out there, okay. your colleagues, your peers yeah. out there, who are, you know, so just about a day before the elections, yeah. somebody uh, wrote something that had me laughing, you know, like on WhatsApp. He was saying that, you talk about the people who will be around, okay. who are around Umwer during yeah. elections, but they will feel too big. They will not come out to participate in the elections. I Some know. of them in Lagos, they will want to come out. They, you know they will rather stay like the Pharisees yes. and criticize this and that. Yeah. Some of them, like you mentioned earlier, say they don't want to come back to the village mm. because witches and wizards are after them and <laughs> things like that. So he was telling them, he was saying to them, he said, you come home. All the people that wanted to kill you by witchcraft, they've all died. So you come, except ah. you are one of them, <laughs> except you are. See, um, I think they should, those are like for say, like for the most part are just hearsays where people say stuff to mm. scare you. Mm but when you come back like for me coming back i had no idea 
like witches and wizards don't care. <laughs> like I was just afraid like the monkeys and snakes won't take my money and run away. <laughs> that was my biggest fear. Are you, are you saying that since you came, nobody has pressed you? No. Nobody I, has pressed you in the dream. Nobody has. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I don't. So you are talking to them. You are talking to your friends. That, I am talking that to That you friends. you've been here and nobody so far has pressed you. Yeah, no one uh -huh. has pressed me. Um, there is mm. that like. I know there is the fear of coming back and there is the when you come back this and this and that and that will happen but for the most part I came back and everything has been good like obviously there are some people you will meet who have an idea that's different than yours but for the most part I need you to understand this is your own home you need, like you can come back and it will be okay like I've been back and I don't think I've had that much of an issue around here other than the fact that people still don't believe that I'm from here <laughs> um, but when you are from here I think for you to come back to see it and to be able to give back to it it's just one of those good things like it's good for your soul it's good like you will you will be happy I don't think you will regret coming back for the most part um, there was another issue you brought up. I can't remember. You asked it with your earlier question. But, I, but for the most part, I do encourage you to, for all my friends out there, um, I know the thought of the village is one of those places that you go to villages, nothing to do. But the village does definitely has changed. Like you can come back, you can go to the markets, you can go to the rivers, like. Um, you can definitely go, there's a lot of, there's even the caves for like adventures if mm. those are things that you're, mm. you're into that you thought you couldn't do when you were here. Yes. But those are definitely things you can definitely enjoy when you're back here. And I, I, want, I want to add that uh, even the America we're talking about and even Canada that we're talking about, there was a time most of it was referred to as the Wild West. Exactly. Huh? Yes. If it is no yes. longer the Wild West, somebody made it so. Exactly. Uh, it was because a couple of people came together and they and made that change. You see, the, the golf courses and the skyscrapers and all the things that we're enjoying there, yeah. they were made. The Bible said that every house was built by some man. Yes. Somebody built it. Exactly. You get it. So uh, I think I'm agreeing with you yeah. that we can also work together mm -hmm. to make Umweri that dream place that we want it, it to be. It definitely is that dream place you can come back to. Um, <laughs> to come back to relax, to enjoy, and just feel at peace again. Mm -hmm. Because, like, those, the wild, the new wild west of the states in Canada is just mm -hmm. one of those places you can get lost in. You can mm. get lost in the fast pace of things. Yes. And then you forget that like sometimes you just need a nice peaceful place to remind you that this is home. Like, <laughs> the matter of fact is this is home. Nice it's just been wonderful talking to you. Do you know that thirty minutes have gone? Oh, and wow. It just feels like three minutes. <laughs> I know, right? It's just like it's been like five minutes. I, I think we're, we're gonna do a part two of this sometime. Okay, no the time problem. is gone. We're gonna do a part yeah, two of this. Huh? Sometime I really enjoyed it. And I hope you out there are listening to Miles Asika Bench uh, I think you have Thank enjoyed you his views <laughs> also. And uh, you know what I like what I like most about you? When I think of whom we're of the future, we're of, the, of the next 20, 30 years, I get very excited. Yeah. And when I see you sitting here like this, uh, I'm seeing as the face yeah. of that Umweri of the future. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that Umweri of, of the future. Uh, it's going to, you are, you, are, you are you are a model of what I think Umweri is going to be as we continue this work. Thank well, you very much, thank Miles. You. Thank you. It's been thank a pleasure, you. really. Thank you thank so you. much. And you out there, thank you for uh, sharing with us for at least your time and uh, giving us the pleasure. attention. God bless you. And remember to join us again soon. <laughs> <laughs> From Hoopla World TV, bye.